Hey, what's going on guys? So today I'm making some time to make this video showing my entire Bala Song collection. This has been requested for many years and uh, some of these lives are, you know, at different locations so it's hard to get them all together but I made it happen to film this video. So, the first little segment here of the video is on Benchmade and pre-Benchmade. That is really my focus. You know, for many, many years I just wanted to collect every Bala Song that was out there. At some point, I focus on trying to get a, a ballast song from every different knife company that makes them. Um, and it's just, it's impossible. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. I mean, you have to have some deep, deep pockets to fulfill ballast song collections. A lot of ballast songs are very, very expensive. It's just the way it is. This is an accumulation of many years, uh, including mostly trading. I would say of all the knives you're going to see in this entire video, I probably outright bought maybe five of them maybe most of the stuff i get through trades all right and that means sacrificing something else so if i want a 600 dollars bell song or a 400 dollars bell song i have to trade a lot of other stuff to get it so this is just a, an ongoing fun you know side collection i, I will always love the bell song design i love the knife and now i can carry them which is very nice as well so some of these i have carried before some i will carry in the future but again, my, my specific focus is on Benchmade as well as PCC or Pacific Cutlery Co. Uh, that's what was Benchmade before they called themselves Benchmade. And the reason I decided to do that and you know focus my collection on that brand is because that's where it started. That's what popularized everything. Obviously, they're not the only company that made battle songs, but they're the ones that put them on the map. And that is, in my opinion, something it's hard to argue. It's hard to argue to say... Well, no, this company is really what made Battle Songs popular. No. What made Battle Songs popular was Benchmade and making a ton of awesome models throughout the years. And they have not stopped. They continue to make Battle Songs, which is very cool. So, where do I even start? So, let's start this video with this model right here, where it all started. The Benchmade Model 42 Battle Song. Now, this is not the original 42 Battle Song. This one is a spring latch, so it's a later generation. I do not currently have a T-latch version. All right, a T-latch is something like this, where it's manual, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but that original T-latch version of this knife was where everything started. Um, this, is, this is just the gold standard of Bala Songs. Um, there's many versions of this knife uh, over the years, but the spring latch, I mean, some people prefer spring latch over a, uh, a T-latch. I happen to like T-latches just because it makes a different sound. That clicking of the latch flying all over the place. Um, does have a very distinctive sound that I'm used to. I've probably had, and I'm not even exaggerating, 20 or 25 of this model. Now, all versions of this model. I've had a black one before. Um, I've had the anodized version of it before. I've had multiple, uh, you know, T-latch versions. I've had the, um, the 42 SS, which is an, a stainless steel handles instead of the titanium. So these do have titanium handles on here. I've had the 440C. I've had the 154. I mean, I've had them all. But this is where it all started with Bala Songs. All right, now if you like the 42, you'll probably really like the 42 MC. It's essentially the same knife, only the MC stands for modified clip. So this one does in fact have a pocket clip. And this particular knife, even though it is worth a uh, you know, nice little chunk of change, this is something I might EDC in the future because with that pocket clip, it just makes it uh, extra friendly for carrying. Now you can see this one does say limited edition on the blade, although they didn't all have that on the blade if I'm not mistaken. There's been a lot of variants on all these different models over the years, but the 42 is totally classic. It just feels great flipping. Uh, for me, it is still the gold standard. There's, you know, literally dozens and dozens of new battle songs in the market since the 42 came out, and some of them are really, really awesome, but it's just, there's so much nostalgia there. So that will probably always be my favorite, the original 42, and of course the 42 MC, just because that little pocket clip makes it a little easier to carry. All right, so next up here is the Benchmade Model 44. I recently did a video on this, so if you wanna see that, you can check it out. Very cool though, this one is a T-latch. All right, so this is what I'm talking about if you're not into battle songs as a manual latch. Now besides flopping around, some people don't like T-latches in models that don't have a latch gate. A latch gate usually is just by design, does not allow the latch to go past a certain point where it can make contact with the blade. So as you're flipping, all right, you can see this blade, the very edge, can come in contact with the latch, all right, which of course you don't want because it damages your blade. So, oh, I forgot I'm keeping these open here. 
Anyway, that is the Model 44, all right, Tanto style blade here, stainless steel handles compared to the, uh, the newer titanium ones. So next up, we have the International Series. This is a Benchmade Model 239 uh, BLK. This one's in black. A lot of times you'll see this just in, you know, kind of a grayish type color. Um, these were just essentially the International Series were cheaper made uh, Benchmade battle songs at the time. Now, besides the 239, the 259 was the same knife with a different handle pattern. You can Google that real quick to see a picture of it. Those are probably a little bit more... Um, I don't know, they're more common than the 239s to have the skeletonized uh, handles here with the slots. The other one has more of a circle pattern on it. So next up here is one of my favorites. This is the Benchmade 31. Now the 31 does have a pot clip on it. It is a shorter three inch blade. This one of course is in titanium, does have a T-latch on here. Uh, this is one of seriously my all time favorite battle songs in history. Um, what's cool about this one is I, uh, at some point when my sister was younger, she got into flipping battle songs for a little bit. And the 31 was perfect because she had much smaller hands being a little kid. I mean, she was probably like, I don't know, nine or 10 years old uh, when she was flipping with me. I remember making a video way back in the day and, uh, you know, she had the, the 31. I just thought it was super cool. But this one's also a fantastic option for actual EDC because it's literally smaller and has the pocket clip. I mean, outside of flipping and having fun manipulating the battle song, this knife is phenomenal for EDC because of that smaller blade, but you still get a full grip on this handle. One of my all-time favorites. If I had to get rid of all these knives and only keep one, it would be really tough to choose between the 31 and the, the 42 MC. Um, I might even go with the 31 just because it's a little harder to replace, but yeah, just kind of how it is. Now, if you like the 31, but you figure that it's a little bit too light for being small, you can get the Uber Rare. 31-03, the 03 has the stainless uh, skeletonized handles on here, but this was also available in, you know, with different inserts, like the 31-01 is a limited edition, a version of the 31 that has like a nice Coca Bolo wood uh, inserts. Then I think the 02, I wanna say they're black inserts, but don't quote me on that. You can of course look all those models up. Basically the same knife, this is only limited to 50 pieces. There's 50 of each version. All right, this one's number 12, or excuse me, 21 of 50. Um, but yeah, there's only 50 in the world ever to be made. Uh, so it is a much heavier version in stainless steel. This one also has the spring latch, all right, compared to the T-latch on the regular 31. All right, but this one is a, a pleasure to flip and a pleasure to actually carry and use if you were to do so. Um, it's a little tough. Oh, I forgot I'm leaving these guys open here. It's a little tough uh, actually carrying something like this just because of the value there, but who knows, maybe I will in the future. I have to kind of get over the collector part of me that wants to keep certain knives pretty pristine. This one would lose its value a little bit if, uh, if I started carrying it, using it, and scratching it up. Um, but, you know, life's short. The older I get, the more I care about having experiences and enjoying things, and the less I care about preserving something's value. And I think that's for a whole different video discussion there. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, life's short. If I never use this knife, I never get to actually carry it and enjoy it. I don't know. What's the point of owning it? Just to say you have it? So I don't know. I'm kind of, like I said, the older I get, the more I just want to use my really nice knives and, and not, you know, worry about keeping them so pristine for reselling them. You know, a lot of times when you're collecting something, especially knives, you know, you want to keep their value. You want to, you know, part of you wants to pass this collection on to your kids or grandkids. You want to maybe sell them in the future. You see them as little mini investments and, uh, and it makes it difficult to just use them and enjoy them, but they're, they're all tools. They're made to cut stuff. So I might, I might have to just get over that hurdle and just, you know, bear down and just use the thing. It's kind of like a brand new car. Once you get that first scratch, it kind of gets it out of the way. You don't want to get a scratch ever. But when you do get that first little rub or that tiny little dent or that scratch or something, I don't know, it, it kind of just like pops the cherry, I guess, for the car. And it's not as big of a deal if you get another scratch, I suppose. But anyway, so next up here, these two are some PCC models. OK, Pacific Cutlery Co. On the right here, we have the Model 30. OK, this has the exposed pins. Very cool. And then we have the Model 11. I have videos on both of these knives individually. If you're interested, the 11 has that Tanto blade, again, exposed pins, and the 30 uh, has our utility style blade, all right, which is a Weehawk with that little swedge on the back. So next up here is the Model 32 from Benchmade. This is the uh, basically miniature Morpho, all right? So the Model 51, which is here, 
all right, which as you can see, I, I have a couple versions of. I have exclusive uh, green and exclusive orange. Both of these, I think, were Blade HQ exclusives. Uh, but this is the Benjamin Model 51 Morpho, the full size. And then this guy here is the miniature, the 32. Now, as you can see here, these are spring latch models. These are newer knives. Um, but all four of these are heavily used. They all have a D2 blade on them. All right, so they do get that kind of, you know, light surface rust if you don't really maintain them. Uh, in this particular case, I've carried and used all four of these knives. Uh, so I have no problem with them having a little tarnishing on them. These are users compared to some of the other ones here, which are more collectible, or I have them for collectible purposes. But anyway, the Morphos, the 51 and the 32, all have a pocket clip on them, which make them very ideal, you know, for EDC as well, which is very nice. So, moving on here. Then I have the 62. Got this one in a trade. Unfortunately, it does not have the uh, the latch. All right, but this is basically the more modern uh, trainer version, okay? Um, the original 42T and 42TR, which is a red version of it, were just the training models. These are the ones that you get to practice. These do not have sharp blades. They have training blades. Usually skeletonized, all right? So you have a quick visual on the fact that that's not a, a sharp blade. They never have any points. So if you're doing aerials and you're just flipping around, you're not going to stab yourself, you're not going to cut yourself. It is Its whole purpose is to just train. So next up here is the more modern Benchmade Model 87. This one is super, super cool. These have uh, billet handles. All right, totally different latch style here. It is still a spring latch, all right, but it does work a little bit differently there. Super, super smooth. I mean, it took a completely different approach when they made these models. Uh, first, they came out with this 87. And then, of course, a lot of people said, eh, I don't really like that blade shape. So then they released the 85, which has a more traditional kind of drop point blade. Uh, but I still have huge, huge love for the 87. This thing is ridiculously sharp. When I first got this, I'd say, I don't know, three or four minutes into flipping, I already cut myself. Um, it, is, it is crazy, crazy, crazy sharp. Very, very well made. Just, uh, just an awesome, awesome knife to actually carry and use because there is a little sheet that comes with this guy. Now, the last two that I have in my collection currently are part of the 6X line. So to kind of go back and explain this, the original Benchman Model 42 was part of the 4X line, okay? So you had the 42 with the Weehawk style blade. Then you had the 43, which is the Bowie blade. You had the um, 46, which was the Spear Point blade. And then you had the 47, which was the Tanto. So 42, 43, 46, 47. Then we skip to the future here where we have the 6X line, okay? So I don't have the 62, which that is the trainer for, of course. Um, but I have the 63, all right, with the uh, Bowie style blade. This is a very good looking knife. Awesome to flip. These do have T-latches on them, which is very cool, all right? These are much heavier with the stainless steel handles, but really, really awesome knives. I do like the 6X line although a lot of people don't like them for uh, flipping. But then I have the 67, okay, which is their Tanto version. Now, I really am not a fan of this particular Tanto style. All right, so here's a 67. We have the 44. I mean, that's a cool-looking Tanto. This one, just kind of weird. It's like a recurve Tanto. But, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't have the full 6X line, nor do I have currently the 4X line. I used to have every knife in the 4X line, except for, of course, the 49, which has that crisp blade, which is, you know, kind of like a little serpent snake tail or something like that. You guys can see it, but I, I, that's been pretty well known. I talked about the 49 for years. It's a knife that I just always had on my bucket list. But to be honest, I'm not really looking for it anymore uh, because they, if you find one for $2,000, that's a deal. Expect to pay probably 2,500, 3,000, 4,000. It depends on which version, of course, but that's like silly money to me as far as knives are concerned. I'd much rather have a dozen expensive, awesome knives than one crazy, you know, expensive collectible knife. So even if I got a 49, which who knows, maybe one day I'll be able to, you know, at least handle one, because I don't think I've ever actually even had one in my hand, uh, except for maybe at a show or something. Um, but it's just one of those knives that I, I just always lusted after. But if I got it, I'd be too afraid to actually enjoy it and use it. It's just too darn expensive. So I kind of lost interest in that, in that particular model. So anyway, that is the Benchmade slash PCC part of my collection. This really is the focus. If I'm ever looking for a Balasol in the future, uh, more than likely it's for this collection. It would be if someone happened to offer, let's say, 
randomly like they had the uh, the 43, you know, or the 46 or the 47. I love to have those three knives back in here. If anyone ever offered those, I make a pretty serious attempt at trying to trade for it. Uh, other things that I have to get one in the collection. But ultimately, I know I'm not going to fulfill this. I'm not going to get every PCC model they've ever had. I'm never going to get, you know, all the, the 6X and 4X line and every variant and stuff. It's just, it's unrealistic to think about those things. Like, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, I would have really strived to do that. But my priorities have changed, and I've had so many different knives, and there's plenty of knives I still want. But it's, I don't have the same, like, you know, need to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on stuff like that. For collectibles, anyway. There are plenty of models that I do want to get in hand. I do want to actually carry and use them and just enjoy them and experience those models. But I just don't have the same priority like I used to. But anyway, this is the focus. So like I said, if, as far as trading goes, uh, if you ever trade something that, you know, fills a hole in this collection, I'd probably be pretty interested in it. So let's move on to some other battle songs. All right, so next up here is Spyderco. Now, when I kind of like um, slimmed down my battle song collection and really tried to focus on just one thing, I wanted to focus on just Benchmade and PCC, but I had these Spydercos. I actually had quite a few more Spydercos, including a couple Spiderflies, the regular ones. I had a 440C version. I also had a VG10 version. I had a Sabo Fly, which was awesome as well. Very unique, very rare at this point, expensive. Um, what else I have? I had the... Uh, I had the Rainbow Fly, two versions. One that was really beat up, missing a latch. The other one was almost brand new. Um, so yeah, I had some other Spyderco battle songs as well, but I ended up selling all the large ones. For some reason, I don't know why, I could not part with these small flies. This is the Spyderco small fly. I actually started, I believe, with the black one. Now, they re-released the small fly too by redesigning a little bit. I think it was, a, I don't know if it was an exclusive to Blade HQ, but I know Blade HQ had it at some point. And it was awesome, and I would love to get that one to add into this collection eventually, although it's not a top priority. Um, but these original small flies were just awesome. Fantastic little EDC knives. They have uh, the wire clips on them, which are fantastic. They're small. They're actually really comfortable. They're just kind of fun to flip. Um, and these are getting more and more rare as time goes on. So originally, I had the black one. I had a blue one, and I traded the blue one years ago, and I really regret it because now... I think that's the only color I'm missing. The black, the blue, the camo G10, and then the um, regular titanium, as well as the red trainer version. I almost never see the trainer versions, um, and I almost never see the titanium versions. I do see the black and camo pop up, uh, you know, once in a blue moon. So as far as like the small flies go, I just love the design so much, I justified keeping these as well as trying to grow this collection. So number one, I would love to have the small fly two and any variants that you know come out in the future, as well as I'm still looking for the blue G10 version of this original knife. Now, although these knives are smaller, they're fantastic to actually use. 154 cm is, is a great steel, a little bit of belly on these um, spear point style blades. These are actually good knives to use besides just kind of flipping and collecting, but they are getting more and more rare. But yeah, I just couldn't let these guys go. So over the years, I'll, I'll continue to collect, you know, the different variants on the small flies. Specifically, the larger ones, like I said, the Spyderco, Spiderfly, and Zabofly, and Rainbow Fly, and those those other variants are, um, they're awesome. They're very cool. Just like the uh, the Spyderco Janus song. Now, the Janus song I originally did have, I had two of them in my lifetime, and I got rid of both of them because people really wanted them. That's a different design. It's not technically a ballad song, I suppose, but... I have a whole separate video on that if you want to check it out. It's uh, Janisong, J-A-N-I-S-O-N-G. Just type in that and cut your lever as a, a tag. Um, that is a Michael Janich um, collaboration, I believe, with, uh, with Spider Co. But just really interesting, fascinating knife for sure. And those are very expensive as well. These are all several hundred dollars each. Um, the Janisong, I think last time I saw for sale, was like four or five hundred bucks. But it's a cool one to have in the collection. I just, I just got rid of it. That's all, just kind of been there, done that. But for whatever reason, I just have a really hard time getting rid of these, <laughs> at least individually. Maybe one day I'll just sell them as a set, who knows. But I like to complete the set. It's just, it's more obtainable than some of my other uh, collection type goals. Uh, it's not the end of the world to find a blue one. It's just you're going to pay a lot of money for it, I'm sure. Um, or I have to give up a lot in trade. Um, but just one of those things, I'm just kind of hanging on to these for now. So those are still currently in my collection. All right, guys, I'm just back for a second here. Um, I was putting away some of these knives and getting some of the other battle songs out. 
And uh, there's one person that popped into my mind, and I want to give him a little shout out here. All right, on YouTube, he does have a, a YouTube channel, but I don't think he posts very often. Uh, it is M O E Balasong. Okay, now he's very active on Instagram. If you're talking about a guy who, you know, collects Bala songs, I mean, back in the day, Chuck Golnick, the Bala song collector, I have to use the air quotes there, the Bala song collector, he was the man. He was the guy with all the knowledge and knew all about every single model and variant and had an amazing collection, really educated all of us on Bala song stuff, right? But MOE Bala song, he has the most impressive Bala song collection I've ever seen in my life. He's a guy who had the same goal I have, but obviously a lot larger bank account. Uh, he has put together the most amazing collection, okay? And I followed him for years now, and he has every single Benchmade Balasong, multiples of each. It's just, it's crazy, his collection. It, it is like the mecca of Benchmade PCC. Not to mention, he has all kinds of brands, too. He collects just a ton of different Balasongs, right? But lately, he's been selling a lot of his collection off. Now, I'm, I'm mentioning this for two reasons. For number one, if you are looking for older discontinued battle songs and stuff, specifically Benchmade, but I mean all kinds of brands, check him out, send him a message. He's selling off a lot of his collection. I don't really know why, um, but uh, but he's the guy to go to, okay? So if you have some money and you want to get a very hard to find battle song, I would really reach out to him. I've talked to him a couple times. He sold some other things too. He happens to be into coins, believe it or not, <laughs> coin collecting. Uh, so I, I've had some discussions with him about stuff like that he had for sale, but Anyway, the other reason I want to bring it up is because people will comment like, oh, dude, why are you getting rid of these amazing knives? This is a guy who's been doing this for a very long time, who has spent tens of thousands of dollars on his collection. And I feel like, and I don't know this person, I didn't ask him this, this is not information he told me personally, so I'm not speaking on his behalf. But I feel like he, he's gotten to that point where it's just like, okay, I did it. You know what I mean? Like, I have, I have a specific... You know interest in these types of things and i want to collect them and he did he pretty much collected all of them i mean there's very few ballast songs especially vintage ballast songs that he hasn't had or currently has i mean like i said his his collection is mind-boggling he's selling more knives than most of us will ever probably even even have in our collection or see but um but i kind of get that i get that he's hit a point in his life where he's just like maybe he has a different interest and he has all this money tied up in, in these valuable collectible knives. But at some point when you have hundreds of really cool knives, what do you do with them? You know what I mean? Eventually you gotta sell them. That's the whole point, right? Unless you really do wanna pass them on to future generations. But I just wanted to bring him up because again, if you're looking for a specific old battle song, like I was just talking about, like the 43, 47, that's the guy to go to. And right now he's selling. So now is the time to pick that stuff up. Okay, so that's, that's the biggest point here. But the other reason I was thinking about them is just because, like I said, at some point, especially when you're younger, you just think like, oh, I want to collect this, that, and this. And what are you going to do? You know, like, um, what's his name? Jerry Seinfeld. Doesn't he have like one of every Porsche? Like he loves Porsche models, so he has like literally one of every year or something. What do you do? I mean, that's really cool at some point, but then you're just sitting on, it's almost like it's like a responsibility. You know what I mean? At some point, you are you might still always love Porsche. In this case, this guy still loves battle songs, but... What are you going to do with all these just sitting around? It's just money that's tied up into that hobby, you know? And maybe you have a different interest and you want to pull all that money out of there, all that equity, the sweat and equity that you have built into that for years and years and years and get into something else. You know, there's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with changing your mind. Now, I will always love knives, but like I said, I don't have the same passion for ballast songs uh, as far as collecting them and flipping them. Now, occasionally people say, dude, where's, where's your flipping videos? It's been years since I've seen a flipping video. I've injured two different fingers on my right hand, which I mainly flip with. It's actually really uncomfortable for me to flip. On top of that, uh, you know, I flipped a lot to, to pass time when I was single. And I'm a married guy now. You know, I, I like spending time with my wife instead of flipping knives. You know, it's, it's just my interests have changed over the years. I will always love ballo songs. I will always love flipping them. But I'm not that guy who's actively trying new tricks and stuff anymore. I just don't. It's just one of those things, you know, everything changes with time. That's one constant we have in our life. Everything changes if you give it enough time. But uh, I'm saying that in a positive way, not, not a discouraging, you know, uh, negative way. Um, but I still love it. And just, you know, breaking these out for this video and, and picking some other ones up from different locations to get all these together for you to see, it's bringing me back to those, those YouTube days where I was, you know, doing a lot of trick videos and, and flipping for hours and hours and hours. 
You know, it is really fun. It's a very cool hobby. It's, it's extremely rewarding. You know, when you try a new move and you finally get it down and it's impressive. Everyone loves seeing battle song flipping. It's just cool, you know, uh, but that's that's a chapter of my life that unfortunately is, is almost over. You know what I mean? Not to say I'm never going to do it again. Maybe one day I'll get back into it, you know, um, but it's just my priorities have changed in my life. So I just want to take a second just to kind of talk about that a little bit because I never I never made a specific video talking about why you don't really see those videos anymore. But who knows? Who knows what the future holds? Maybe I get really back into it and I start doing, you know, different tricks all the time and stuff. And you never know. You never know what's around the corner. But anyway, just wanted to uh, to mention that. So I'm going to put these away and grab the rest of the battle songs I have here and finish up this video. I'll be back. All right. So we got some more battle songs here. Now, the first one uh, up is uh, one, again, I had a hard time getting rid of. This is from Atropos Knife. Um, I actually still have another one of his battle songs, but I cannot get it for this video. Uh, I do have a dedicated video on it. It is amazing. It has all carved bone handles. Super, super cool. Definitely check out that video if you're interested. In fact, if you like that knife, he has another one available with a totally different theme, uh, I believe, still on uh, Instagram. But anyway... So this is one of his his first small knives. Again, for some reason, I kind of like the small battle songs, uh, like those small flies. Um, this was the second one I ever got from a Tropos knife uh, out of Russia. The first one was the Demon. The Demon was an amazing knife. Had to sell it just to pay a bill, or I might have traded it for something else that I sold. But either way, it was just forced because I had to, I had to pay a bill. Was, life happens, you know. Uh, but this is one that I ended up keeping. This one's super cool. Again, it is smaller, T-latch on here. All right, super smooth, really fun to flip. Um, and a little tiny Tanto blade on there. Just awesome. Very cool little knife. All right, start, it's currently still in the collection there. Next up is the Schrade uh, Manila Folder. Now, this one is not a particularly great knife. I mean, this one, I, I actually flipped this a lot when I got it. It's pretty beat up. It's loosened up quite a bit because it has a pin construction here. Does have a sharpened swedge on here from the factory. Um, key latch, you know, like I said, this one is, is sloppy. It's manila style, meaning our, our latch is not on the bite handle. It's actually on the safe handle. Uh, but this one has a lot of history. It's really the only reason I saved this. This is supposed to be an homage to the original Schrade manila folder from back in the uh, 80s. Uh, I don't think I ever actually got one of the originals, unfortunately. So I ended up keeping the, the remake. All right, so I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, then I have this little... Uh, Bear and Sons uh, trainer. I just kept this. This is a shorter, again, shorter knife, not a full size uh, battle song. For some reason, I just like this one. This is one I'll hand people sometimes if they're over, you know, if I want to do uh, a little bit of manipulation in front of them uh, and then have them try it. Like, you know, they don't, they're not worried about cutting themselves. I just always like this knife. It's not particularly expensive or particularly good in quality. I think for a pinned construction battle song, it's not bad. This one has seen plenty of use and it's still kicking. So I'd recommend this if you just want to get a knife, you don't want to cut yourself, you don't want to have any issues or anything, but you don't also don't want to spend an arm and a leg to get one. I want to say these are probably 30 to 40 bucks, maybe even cheaper now. Very cool though, very cool little uh, tray knife. So I didn't take these out of the case here, but I just wanted to show you these real quick as well as I have another case with some just random cheap knives, but I have a couple trainers here. Uh, these are plastic trainers as well as these. These, I don't remember who made them off the top of my head. I apologize. If you're watching and you happen to make this, please you know, comment down below. But these are two that I acquired. This, these came out shortly after the, uh, the Squid Industries uh, Squiddy came out. The Squiddy Trainer, the original white one here, is awesome. It's just, I can't describe how much fun it is. If You don't even have to be into knives or battle songs so much. If you're into like pen flipping and manipulation and you know different fidgety type things, this is something that's awesome. It has a very distinctive feeling to it that it's just unlike anything I've ever had before. Squid Industries, in a general, if you're looking for battle songs, they are a must try. All right, they have some really high quality stuff. Uh, the prices are obviously pretty expensive on some of the knives there, but you know, comparing to other brands, it, it's just you know par for the course, I guess. They just make some of the smoothest battle songs out there. Period. Trainer or live blade doesn't matter. Um, they had like a, what was it, the Kraken, I forget. Literally the smoothest battle song I've ever had. I sold that to actually someone who lives locally to me. Fell in love with it, I ended up selling it. I do regret selling it. That was the smoothest, most uh, wonderfully flipping experience I've ever had with the battle song. 
But anyway, so you have the original Squiddy, then the Squiddy G, which is the gray version, of course, and then the Squiddy C, which is the clear version. So these two here are actually original 90s era ballast songs I had when I was a young teenager. So these have a lot of sentimental value. They're some of the, uh, well, I wouldn't say the worst because I still think these are better quality than the like sub $20 ballast songs you can get today. Now they're like extra, extra cheap. But back in the day, these had just like pop metal handles. I mean, they usually snap. If you use these super hard, they'd break at the handle. It's not even like the pins would loosen up and come out. They, the handles would break before anything else, but they had, I mean, a million looks and colors and different finishes and stuff. Just super, super cool. Very, very 90s. No latch gates or anything so that your blade would smack the end of that, that uh, latch there. And, you know, it was okay though because we didn't really care. Most times we were flipping them. You know, me and my friends and stuff were having fun like that. Um, more so than, than actually using them. Now, of course, I did carry one occasionally, but I was into all kinds of knives back then, so I was actually carrying better quality knives to actually use and cut stuff with. But anyway, so that is this little random uh, group here. Where do I even start? All right, so on the left here, we have two antique battle songs. These are over 100 years old. All right, you can see these have rulers on them. These weren't made to flip like we see battle songs today. This was just a uh, unique style in order to um, enclose that blade so you don't get cut. But these do have actual, you know, measuring tools on the handles. They became rulers themselves. So if we actually line these up like this, we have the actual, you know, ruler that goes all the way across. Kind of like some multi-tools today. But really interesting, this one, the blade just says patent. Like patent pending there's no other information on this one but these are dated over 100 years old this one's a little bit smaller made by a different company with a very similar style all right so you can see these actually have folded metal handles so each piece is one piece of metal that's folded over pretty fascinating and a little brass latch to keep that closed so you wouldn't be taking this out and flipping it and you know using it like that you this would literally be with your tools <laughs> but that would be your your knife option there, which is pretty cool. Uh, besides that, we have the old school comb. This is actually just a child's toy. It says folding pocket comb. All right, so bottoms just kind of snap together. And then we have our comb. We have the fine tooth on one side, coarse tooth on the other. And you can't see it right now, but I'm brushing my beard. It works fantastic as a comb. Works really well. Super lightweight aluminum handle, same style as that, just folded over. This thing weighs nothing. I would be surprised if this weighed, I don't know, more than an ounce and a half. Um, but yeah, more of a child's toy than anything. I thought it was kind of cool. I'd say the original paperwork for it too. Uh, next up here, we have a homemade battle song from I don't know what era, because when something's homemade, it's kind of hard to tell when it was made. Same deal though. We have the folded over single piece of metal for our handles. All right, very thin, very crude, simple design. All right, and this is interesting latch too, because this latch only comes over one way. So basically, instead of you know being a T latch, it's more of like an R, a lowercase R, I suppose. But it works fine. It definitely uh, functions as intended. Again, a little bit harder to uh, flip here; it sticks a little bit, but uh, nonetheless, kind of cool. Definitely uh, appreciate all battle songs. So next up, on top here we have. Well, first off, we have the. Balio Bala Song. So this is the Spyderco pen. All right, I don't know if you've seen this before. So we have a functional pen inside these handles with little weights on the end so you can actually flip the thing. This is uh, really cool like for school. <laughs> Obviously you can have a knife in school, but you can have a pen. However, I'm sure if you had this in class flipping around and you're really bugging your teacher, they would find a way to take it from you even though it's not really a knife. I, I'm sure it can be considered a, uh, a distraction. Although, who knows, in the world of having sensory toys, you know, if you have some kind of issue or something, maybe you, you know, be able to have something like this to uh, play with at school. But uh, yeah, the Balio is very cool. They had a ton of colors. They probably still make them, but even if they don't, there was a ton available and very affordable as well. Then I'm not gonna take it out right now, but this is a, you know, it's a battle song, but it's flat. So instead of the handles, you know, kind of being more squared off around it it's just two flat sides all right I, i'm sure i did a video on that in the past before i still have two people made me battle songs one's out of aluminum 
I know I've shown this before, but I'll pop this out to show you again. All right, this was from many years ago. Put my name on there, Cutler Lover. All right, just aluminum with some brass pins. Very rudimentary, super cool. Not only does it have sentimental value because of you were made it for me, but it's actually really fun to play with. That aluminum is kind of soft in the hand. There's uh, not, not like, um, you know, super aggressive sharp edges. They're, at, they're a little bit rounded. So it's actually kind of comfortable. And as you can see there, uh, you don't know which one's the bite handle. So if you're watching carefully, I flip this around and I ricocheted with the blade. So I felt that. It's not sharp enough to cut because I did not cut my finger, but I definitely felt that. I felt like uh, I got scratched by a cat or something. Anyway, so <laughs> moving on. Someone made a 3D printed one for me as well with a spare blade, which I still have and occasionally play with. This is the old school utility style one. I've had so many people ask to buy this. Like I was literally offered $200 at some point for this thing. This is a $5 knife from one of those Chinese sites. And I think they might still have them out there somewhere. But yeah, just a little balsam that takes, you know, utility blades. It is super cool, very cheaply made, but I love the idea, of course, and a lot of people do as well. So if you ever see a source for that, you can let me know and I'll certainly share with everyone. So this one I got as a gift one year for Christmas. You can see these little wings here. By the way, this is a spring style latch with no spring. So it's kind of a spring tea latch thing. But anyway, we have a bottle opener. All right, very simple, very cool. Also just, you know, enjoy the fact that this is a smaller size. So I thought that was really neat. So I kept that in the collection. Like I said, not everything has to have value. A lot of this stuff just has some sentimental meaning to me. However, the right side here does not. The right side, I mean, we have a comb, we have a trainer, um, we have like a 42 Springer knockoff, another 42 Springer knockoff. I keep these for, just for reference, when people talking about fake, you know, bench and stuff, I'll show you real quick. I don't know if these, actually one of these might be the fake 49. This one is. This one's the fake Benchmade model 49, although it's not branded Benchmade, so it's not really a counterfeit, it's just a copy of the design. But that's what I was talking about, by the way, with those Chris, Chris style blade, where it's wavy. But, uh, but yeah, I think this other one might be a counterfeit. I know I had them at some point. Again, just to use as references, people looking to find out if theirs are real or not. Let's see. So we have the obvious fake style latch. If you ever see this latch, bench may never be anything like that. So yeah, this is the sharpened, <laughs> it's not that sharp, 49 with the fake bench may logo. All right. So clearly not a 49, but as close as I ever got to one. All right. Fake markings on there. But yeah, some other cheapo ones. Actually, the top row here, none of those are actually, well, no, I shouldn't say that. This one's razor sharp. This is a counterfeit, and I, off the top of my head, forget the brand. This one is a trainer, trainer. This one looks like it has <laughs> that symbol there. Maybe you can see that from here or not. I'm not gonna bring it up to the camera, but that's actually backwards. And it's not what you think. This has a samurai anime type thing. So it's it's the symbol from an anime character. This one was added in a trade a long time ago. So I just kept it. These two aren't sharp at all. These are just kind of wicked. These are like, again, anime related somehow. I don't watch anime. So I'm sure if you guys know the characters or something. But I thought these were kind of cool. All right. So we had this wicked looking like, I don't know, demon goat character thing on the top. And it's raised. And then we have these, these crazy, huge, protruding, almost looks like fangs, right, by our tang. I would love, like, a sharpened version of this, but this isn't even sharpened at all. It's, it's more like a prop, you know, but I think this is all, again, anime-related. I got this one, this one, this one's a different design, but similar, and then this one, all three of them in a trade. I want to say someone just threw them in there because they didn't want them anymore. I forget exactly what it was, but I know these were on eBay at some point, too. They were fairly cheap. But yeah, that's pretty much that. So let's move on. I'll be back with another case. All right, so I think this is it for now, unless I'm forgetting something. This is a nice roaring fire case. I give you a little sneak preview of this in another video. And I'm actually gonna, I think I'm gonna swap these back out to one of those other cases since they weren't full. I might utilize this case for something else. I might actually put flashlights in here. But anyway, let's pop this strap out. And we'll get talking about some of these vintage models here. So, 
these I kind of consolidated a little bit. These are the vintage ones. These are all like 70s, mostly 80s style ballast songs. The very first one here, and the most valuable in this case, is the Master Ballast Song, okay? So this guy here, you can see it even has a date on it, 1984. I'll let the camera focus. So this was made in 1984, and so was I. All right, you can see the Master. This is from Taylor Seto. All right, Surgical Steel, Japan. And this is a famous uh, ballast song that's disguised as a set of pens. So when this is in your pocket, it's just two pens, or maybe a pen and a mechanical pencil, who knows. But this can be worn in a business environment and not looked at twice. But it is, in fact, a little ball song. Super, super cool. Let's set that off to the side. Then I have some of the more famous um, 80s style ballast songs. This was the, oh, I'm sorry, this was the original Manila folder. I forgot I did get this one in trade. I talked about the newer Schrade version, which they were trying to replicate this original one. All right, so I do have one. I totally forgot about that. At some point, I got it in a tray, just forgot about it. So this one, you can see, has brass handles, nice and chunky and thick. In fact, it's funny because this original is in better shape than the, the remake that they made in the 2000-something. I want to say it was past 2010, so it's not, it's not that old, maybe five, six years or something. Maybe even less. I don't know. You guys can tell me, but they recreated this, and the original is even better. So let's put that back. Very cool. I actually might put these, I'm going to rearrange all this now that I, you know, making this video, but. So here we have another 80s style ballast song from Frost Cutlery. Very cool. This one was probably carried, but that blade looks like it was never used. All right, so this has metal sheets over a brass frame. Might be hard to tell that. Whoops, I guess I'm keeping these closed for now. But anyway, moving on. Let's see, what else do we have here? We have two, well, we have four FHMs. No, four or five, four. Four FHMs, one, two, three, and four. So what is an FHM? An FHM is, stands for Filipino Handmade. So as most of you know, the ballast song is tradition in the Philippines, all right? Uh, you can go to Batangas and you can see literally people on you know the street and markets uh, hand-making ballast songs and selling them. They've been doing that for ever. <laughs> I don't know the exact date. In fact, if you look at like books, a lot of people will say that the French invented the ballast song, but you know, a lot of people, especially if you're Filipino, it's part of your, your heritage, you will argue that the Filipino people created the design. And it's very true, they could have created the design. Now there's documents showing that, you know, the ballast song design existed in France in the 1700s, um, but it doesn't mean that it wasn't in, you know, the Philippines in the 1300s or the 1200s. Who knows? They just didn't find any documents proving it. But anyway, these are handmade, like I said, by the Filipino uh, people in the Philippines. Here's a much larger one. Um, and a lot of times they will use things like bone and antler, a lot of brass, all right? Very simple materials to make very usable knives. Here's another one of those designs. So there's, I mean, it's endless when you're talking about the FHMs. I mean, as far as size, shape, style, some are really simple. Like these are simple ones. There's very, very ornate ones where you'll see like, you know, eagles and birds, you know, incorporated into the tang and the quillions and, you know, the handle scales and, you know, heavy engraving. It just depends. But these are a good little representation of what you might find if you went to the Philippines, you know, as a, a tourist and wanted to bring something home. It'd be something like this. So, yeah, pretty cool. Very uh, important, I think, addition to any Balsong collection because there's so much heritage and history there. Now, speaking of no heritage or history, we have two Pakistani-made ballast songs. So this is simply not to say that the Pakistani people couldn't have had a ballast song 500 years ago or something, but this is more or less just like ballast songs are popular in the 80s, so people in Pakistan started making them. <laughs> or maybe companies in America decided to have them made in Pakistan super cheap and imported to sell here in the US. But both of these are you know, brass and stainless. And they're both marked Pakistan. I do love this very interesting kind of I don't know, like waffle grid? I don't know how you describe that really. But you can see both of these are manila style where our latch is on our safe handle, not our bite handle. Okay, but these are again marked Pakistan. But Pakistani, uh, the Pakistan people were a very big part of the knife industry in the 80s and 90s and probably the 70s as well. 
because they were making all that kind of stuff. I mean, half of the cool fixed blades we saw at two in the morning on the knife show, you know, the knife network and stuff, those were all Pakistani made stuff. You know, it's cheap labor. That's why they had it made over there. So it is what it is. Move these guys over. Let's see what else we have here. All right, so we have a small little guy. This one is a Gypsy, I believe. No, Dragon Lock, my bad. Dragon Lock, we do have a little dragon on the blade there. I'd have to uh, look this up to see exactly what manufacturer this is. Could have been Taylor, you know, could have been Gypsy. I thought it was Gypsy originally, but I'd have to reference that online to see who the original maker was. But again, these are just classic, you know, 80s models. This is the Gypsy one. This one is made by Parker. This is what I thought was on the blade, but it was on this larger one. So Parker Knife Company, again, very, very present in the 80s in the knife industry. This one's definitely used and carried and beat up a little bit. That latch doesn't want to stay shut. All right, here's another one from Fury Brand. Here's the Hornet 2. I think I made a separate video on this, but this one is made by Fury. However, it should be the same as the Frost Cutlery. A lot of times people will import, you know, different knives and they'll, they'll brand them as their their own. But this is essentially part of the same series of knives. Now you can see the blades are very similar, even though one is a little bit more of a clip point, even though we have kind of a sharpened uh, swedge here and this one's more of a drop point. Uh, but you can see the styling's the same, the handles are the same, the construction's the same. But one was made by Fury, at least marked anyway, and the other one's made by Frost Cutlery. They're really made by the same people just they stamped in a different logo depending on when they were selling it I suppose and then we have a pair I ended up with two of these somehow um, of some Cho knives okay and these are marked Valor which Valor by the way um, imported a ton of bow songs in the 80s all right Valor Miami USA now it says Miami USA but I'm fairly certain they were importing these it's just the company was located in Miami but that, I believe, concludes the collection. So this, these are the rest of the battle songs in the collection. Let's open this manila folder back up. Yeah, I'm, I'm very pleasantly surprised. I forgot that I got one of these back in the collection. I had to put that one with the other one. And of course, our, our master here. All right, that little, little three inch blade or two and a half inch blade. So there you go, there is my battle song collection. Some of you might be thinking, wow, Jeff had way more battle songs than I thought. I know there's a couple of you out there thinking, wow, Jeff really didn't have much. <laughs> I thought he had a million of these things. I probably had twice as much in my collection uh, about four or five years ago. And then you guys know, like, I don't know, eight or 10 years ago, I sold my entire collection to a girl in Hawaii for a couple thousand dollars. And I had some really interesting ones when I, I first had my collection. But you know, your interests, you know, they come and go. I mean, I'll, I'll always like ballad songs, but as far as like, you know, specifically collecting them, I don't always put a high priority on them, you know what I mean? But, but anyway, for those who are curious, this is the whole collection at once so you guys can see what I actually have. Um, but there's three focuses in my collection these days. Number one, of course, Benchmade slash PCC. Number two, fulfilling the rest of that Spider Coast Small Fly collection. And number three, just, you know, I would say vintage ballast songs in general. Uh, they interest me. I just love it because it's old school. This is just where this stuff began. This is where the interest began. And that's why I like it so much. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know down in the comment section how many battle songs I have in my collection because I don't know. I haven't counted them lately. Uh, I don't even know what my guess is. So yeah, if you uh, have that kind of time in your hands, feel free to comment below with how many are in this video. So that's all. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have an awesome day. I will mention one more thing. I do have, I think, four or five more ballast songs that are not in this video. I know this says my entire collection, but those four or five ballast songs are not easy to get. They are the more expensive ones. I still have my custom 29 knives ballast song. Again, I have that Atropos knife with the carved bone. Um, and I have a couple more that I may or may not have shown you before, but they are higher end stuff. And I do keep those in a separate location, all right? Uh, and like I said, it's, it's very, very difficult to get to those at the moment especially during winter, which I can't really explain why, but, but just keep in mind, this is literally everything I own minus maybe four or five, okay? So that's all. And as I'm, I'm talking about this right now, I realized I did not mention the little tiny Ballasong USB that was in that other case. <laughs> let, me, 
Let me grab that case real quick. I don't know. I just I don't know why that randomly popped in my head. But let me see. I know I have one. Oh yeah, here it is. I know someone's gonna comment, dude. What was that little tiny guy? That's it. It's funny. This is a knockoff version of the Benchmade Balasong USB that they had. I don't know if it was the early 2000s or late 90s, but Benchmade made one like this. Okay, this has a, just a generic butterfly shape on it. But it was actually Benchmade logo, Benchmade made. And of course, technology wasn't the same as it was today, so that it only held, who knows, you know, 16 megabytes or something ridiculously small. But yeah, that was a thing. And at some point, some, some company copied it. And that's what this is, the copy of the Benchmade. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have an awesome day. And I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.